Right now, we are in one of the asymmetrical times in the metal markets where the odds of making life-changing returns are right in front of us. What is good, Stackers University? If we were in a class, this could easily be a week-long topic, but I have around 10 minutes, so let's get after it. When we are done, my hope is that you will be prepared to assess three significant arbitrage opportunities in the metals market and identify which of the five approaches best fit your risk reward tolerance. In a nutshell, when we use the term asymmetrical bet in investing, what we're really talking about are opportunities where the potential upside significantly outweighs the potential downside. This favorable risk reward ratio is what allows us to achieve significant gains. Too often when we think about risk reward, we think about it as a linear relationship or a straight diagonal line going up to the right. While that does happen in the world of investing, most of the time risk reward is more like a curved line like you see here. It doesn't matter if we're comparing asset classes or how to invest within an asset class, the risk reward curve kind of looks like this most of the time. And this is a significant distinction because one of the biggest differences between the successful investors and everyone else is how risk is viewed. First, successful investors understand that risk is not something that can be avoided, it can only be managed. Secondly, successful investors make sure that they get paid for taking on additional risk. And third, risk is not the same thing as volatility. This is exactly where and why asymmetrical bets become so invaluable when investing. And I wanna highlight three particular ways. One, high return potential and low downside. This is where small allocations can generate outsized returns while any potential losses are relatively small compared to the upsides. Two, arbitrages. These are often a result of market inefficiencies or mispricings. One recent examples are the higher gold and silver prices in the East, and another example times when we've been able to buy metals right at the production cost of the actual metal. Lastly, unique wealth building opportunities. When we can find a scenario where there is an opportunity for potential high returns and arbitrages in the marketplace, we find that even if a few of our bets are successful, the gains are so significant that they outweigh the losses and those losses actually don't even matter. Other examples of asymmetrical bets include investing in startups or early stage uh, companies like explorers, using options or derivatives, or investing in companies that have taken over a distressed asset, kind of like when we talked about West Red Lake Gold taking over after Pure Gold had failed, or Iber American buying a mismanaged tin producer. The key is identifying the proper conditions of what creates an asymmetrical bet, particularly as it relates to high potential returns with limited downside risk. The reason why I spent so much time on this is because once you can identify these opportunities, which do not come around as often as you think, the next critical step is figuring out how you want to take advantage or play the market. As I see it, the market conditions are very clear that metals are poised to go higher, and it almost doesn't matter which data point you use to make your case. It doesn't matter if we're talking about ratios between gold and the stock market, commodities versus financial assets, inflation, money printing, or the impact of the real estate and business cycles on money rotation. It all points to metals going higher. And let's not forget, some even more asymmetrical bets exist within the precious metals. The three biggest ones being, first, silver's incredible underperformance. While gold continues to reach new highs, silver is still 40% below its all-time high. Second opportunity, as you can see from this chart, the huge performance gap between physical metals and the miners that pull those metals out of the ground. And third, how historically cheap platinum is compared to gold and even silver. Metals are no longer a question of if or when, they are happening right now. This means in order to fully capitalize on these opportunities, you need to spend some time determining where on the risk reward continuum you wanna to invest to maximize your returns while we have this asymmetrical opportunity. As I see it, there are five major ways of doing this. First and foremost, it has to start with physical metal ownership, preferably in your hand, as this represents your highest potential return for the lowest amount of risk. Next, producing mining stocks, which I put in the high reward and moderate risk level. High reward because when you know what you're getting into, you can read their financials and use that to give you price projections, PE ratios, net asset values, cash flows, and another other tools that will dramatically increase your chances of picking the right company and that company being successful. They also have at least a moderate level of risk because all you have to do is ask anyone that's holding First Quantum in Panama or SSR in Turkey, and you will be reminded that there's always some level of risk here. The third way is by ETFs or metal index funds. While boring on the surface, making money is exciting. 
And these are great ways to capture the beta or the benchmark return. While I prefer spending my time to picking individual companies, there's not a single thing wrong with using ETFs or index funds. I feel even more strongly about this now than I did a year ago, and it's really simple on some levels. I believe the beta returns will be so significant out of this particular market that those returns will make you more than happy. And I'm warming up to these ETFs and uh, index funds because the more Joe Public comes into the market, they're not going to look at an individual company. They're not going to know anything about anything other than they want to be a part of the action. And the ETFs and the e index funds give them that exposure. So that's where the money is going to flow for sure. Fourth, coming in with the highest potential return and highest potential risk are your exploration and discovery stocks. These investments are like taking steroids. They're going to amplify your returns and your gains, but they also could kill you at the same time. This segment of investment is really the land of 10 and 20x returns, but it's also a wasteland of investors who have been killed by these companies along the way. In reality, Failure is and should be expected from these companies. The challenge is one out of 10 of those explorers does something amazing. And the gains from that one company more than cover the losses from the other nine. And there's so much to say about this category, but what is most important for you to hear right now is portfolio management. There's nothing wrong with putting some money to work in this part of the, of the market, but those positions need to be small. You need a basket approach and you have to view them almost like lottery tickets. Big money can be made, but you have to be willing to be a very different investor with a very different temperament. Fifth and the last major way is going to actually feel a little bit like blasphemy to some of you, but it needs to be discussed because it's a viable and valuable investment approach. So brace yourself. It's leasing or collateralizing your metals. I know, I know, just hear me out. Most of us have parts of our stack that we say we would never sell. If you're never going to sell it, the first question I have is why have it at home where it's exposed to potential theft or damage to like from a fire? And two, why not earn interest on your metals so it not only appreciates in terms of dollars, but it also grows in terms of ounces. You can do this through companies like Monetary Metals, a company I know very well and have a lot of confidence in. And another company is UPMA. Obviously, that's not financial advice, but the reality is why not give yourself the opportunity to grow your wealth while it just sits there? I'm also very curious to see if Uncle Rick Rule's Battle Bank gets into this business as well. Even if Battle Bank doesn't, what they will do is allow you to use your metals as collateral for other loans. This is a game changer because I've never ever had a bank even acknowledge my metals as a type of asset. So this approach is another way metals could help you grow your wealth. Let's say you want to buy a rental property. Wouldn't it be amazing to be used as collateral as opposed to having to liquidate them in order to get the loan or purchase the property? Obviously, I don't know what's best for you in your situation. My goal was to open your eyes a little more to the asymmetrical upside of our current situation and encourage you to develop a plan and an approach to manage your metals through the lens of a portfolio. This also has to account for your risk tolerance and your performance goals. For me, that was physical as my base or my foundation and then overweighting my equity positions in producing or near-term producing miners and royalty company. And then I leave about 10% towards a basket approach of explorers. The most important thing you must do is have a plan. There are too many good opportunities for you to pursue. I hope you use this information to really think about what resonates for you. Develop your plan and simply work your plan while not allowing yourself to be distracted, derailed, chasing the next shiny object. In the comments section, do you have an investing plan for your metals? If so, what is the plan? Is it all physical, a mix of physical and mining stocks? Or you can simply put an A plus in the comment section to let everyone know that you always stack smarter and never stop learning.